Hello and welcome back to Loud and Proud Orlando. We are live on Thursday night, ready to preview Montreal uh, this weekend, Saturday night. And we're going to talk a little bit about some Leagues Cup as well that's been coming up. Um, and generally just get excited for the weekend's games, right, Luis? We did the review. If you've not checked it out yet, go listen to Monday's episode uh, where we look back at the DC win on the road because we're road warriors, Luis, getting those three points. Um, and then also we had a Pride Pod on Tuesday as well, which was big because we're all talking about Barbara Banda. So Pride game at home tomorrow, uh, Friday night. If anybody wants to come out to that, we encourage you, City fans, to come support the Pride, which is going to be a big game for them. I think that's everything in my notes. I want to say hi to Louise and also hello to all of you. Drop your comments in and let us know if you're watching. Uh, well, thank you to everybody joining. Um, uh, I know I, I, I did not put out that we were going live. My apologies, but thanks for everybody that joined. Um, if you're on Instagram, uh, the link of our YouTube channel, it's going to be on the bio right there. Also, you can drop off your comments. If you're on X, we'll kindly ask you to retweet uh, this um, this episode and drop us your comments also. And then thank you for everybody watching uh, on YouTube as well, over 9 to 10 people. So thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, definitely is another turnaround game that Orlando has uh, in its in its hands um, to prepare us for what's coming. You know, it's it's gonna get tougher only, right? So we 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 gotta take these points against Montreal. They're not really looking too too good as in the beginning of the season. So I think we can definitely capitalize on that with the good momentum that the last game uh, brought to us. So. Definitely uh, excited. Uh, also excited for Barbara Banda. Uh, check out our social media for all the footage on that as well. And again, thank you guys for your support, John. Uh, we got a first comment here, Luis. Not from an Orlando City fan, uh, but we got a comment here on X from Alex. Hi, Alex. Uh, he says, hello, guys. I'm from a I'm Montreal fan. Wish you a good game and welcome to Montreal if you come here. <laughs> uh, Alex, sadly, I'm not oh, going man, to Montreal. Love, uh, we we cannot make it up, but there might be some fans. Um, yeah. So anybody who is, let Alex know. Maybe what guys want to meet up and go for a beer. That would be nice. Uh, I, I'm sure it's beautiful. It would be cold. Take your coat. It's going to be cold <laughs> up there. I hope the boys are prepared. Uh, summer has finally arrived here in Florida just in time uh, for them to go up and play two games in Canada. Uh, drop your comments, guys. We want to read them out. Let us know what you think about this game coming up. But first, let's going to get into... A little bit of analysis on Montreal uh, and how they're doing this season. Uh, obviously, we played them already, Luis. You know, um, so it's it's strange to me that we're playing them again so quickly, so early in the season. Uh, do you find that is it odd to think that I mean, every other team we preview we haven't played yet? Are these guys we've already played. Yeah, it's it's just it's just Don Garber and the schedule. You know, <laughs> a lot of things to say about that. I'm just, um, it, you know, the first time we previewed the game against Montreal, I did brought to people's attention, you know, that they have, um, you know, people like Opoku. Uh, we also brought the name of Matias Cocaro. Uh, he played in uh, Huracan, a small club in Argentina. Well, it's a historic club in Argentina, but right now they're going into some financial problems. 26-year-old, uh, um, you know, Uruguayan um striker so four million pounds um what he was worth and also you know joseph martinez that always loves to ruin and spoil our parties right so i mean they have a pretty i think a very good team i think they have a better team than when um the former what was the name of the striker john the the former striker guy Kamara. You know, no, 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 it was not Kai Kamara. It was the Honduran. It was from Honduras. So her guy's name. Uh, the guy who always Alex, gets the fight. Huh? Alex from Montreal, help us out here. I know who yeah, you mean. You, but but you know, well, well, that guy. I, for, I forgot his they, name. They I had a few him. older forwards who weren't really producing. Yeah. You know, I can't remember. Well, I mean, but right now, I think they have a pretty good game. So it's, it's, it's definitely, I mean, they have a pretty good team. And also, we've been coming, you know, We've we, we've been 
I guess I want to say we've improved a little bit too, you know, um, based on the last, um, you know, performance. But, you know, again, this was the last game, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's February 27th. Cast your mind back to February 24th. Sorry. Um, when it was the Orlando City versus Montreal, nil nil. The team, surprisingly, Luis, I was looking at our team. It's actually probably not far off what we will see. You know, the, the 4 2 3 1 was there. We did have Wilder and Cesar. We just, I, I remember just not being able to score. And, yeah, I, I and think Montreal is a similar situation, neither team. But the stats show that they played a better game. I think we were, we were struggling a bit early season. And this, we kind of, we kind of got away with a draw, if I remember correctly. Yeah, uh, I think with Montreal, we're going to see. Um, I'm trying to look the their last, I guess, Cincinnati. I mean, it's pretty much. You know, we're, we're going to see Shonier and Piet. We're going to see Edwards. We're going to see Ruan, Lasseter, Kokaro, Duke. So I think, uh, and also uh, right here, um, instead of Corbo, we're probably going to see Sosa right here, right? So another good piece that they have on their back line. So um, we just have to do our part. Um, I mean, look, last game, the best, one of the best, you know, Santos had a monster game here, you know? um 7.9 i i personally believe orlando is going to go with the same lineup that we that we already know the one that got us the win so with um torres as on the 10 with muriel with angulo and with ojeda i think that's i'd say that's going to be it i don't know what you think i think it's interesting that they play the three back system as well like we just faced against dc I think there's a lot of similarities between this road trip to Montreal and our, our last road trip away to DC. Um, I think different way they attack, but the way they lay out the team in that sort of playing with a three slash five back uh, is very, very similar. So I'm thinking like you, Luis, that it's going to be, um, we'll get into the lineup later and do it exact, but um, we're probably going to see something very similar to what we saw last week. Uh, based on lots of reasons, consistency, but also the fact that we got the W and these guys are playing a similar um, defensive tactic as well. Joshua Tall uh, left us a few comments. He says, hi, John and Luis, vamos Orlando. Let's get the win versus Montreal. He says, I really hope we score first and at least score a few goals, defend good and win. I believe that last time we played them, Galese had a great game. Uh, by the stats, it shows, yeah, on this one, he did he did have a good game. That's why I remember us. Maybe we could have lost it at the end of this match, if I remember correctly, Luis. And he kind of bailed us out a little bit, as Pedro likes to do. Um, but looking at Montreal's more recent results, they um, they beat. Sorry, they lost away at DC one nil. So yeah. considering we just went to DC and got the win, that's positive for us. Then they got absolutely smacked by the Sounders. It reminded me of uh, this scoreline of uh, a certain team we don't talk about in a certain event that happened earlier in the year, Luis. But uh, the Sounders smacked them 5-0. Uh, that was away at the Sounders. And then recently they were back at home and they beat Cincinnati 2-1, uh, which is a pretty good result based on how, you know, Cincy are a pretty, pretty good team in the East. Uh, so mixed bag, I think, for Montreal. Um it's funny, Luis. Last week, I had in the notes that DC were eighth in the table at, with ten points when we went to go in their house. Guess where right. Montreal are? <laughs> They're eighth in the table with ten points. So oh, yeah. it's a similar. The there's so many similarities between I think last week's you know road trip and this week's road trip. So uh, let's let's repeat, right? I think we can do it again. Let's just try and steal another three points on the road. Yeah, so I, I do want to bring up uh, a couple of things here uh, when it comes to Montreal that definitely grab my attention. I mean, their attack. I mean, you're talking about they have – I mean, we may not like Joseph Martinez, but he's had 11 scoring attempts so far for Montreal. Out of those 11 scoring attempts, he has two goals. He's one of the top goal scorers in the team, right? Kokaro has 12 scoring attempts, three goals. 
both of them have over 80% passing accuracy rate. Joseph Martinez actually drops and um, has a, about 88% passing accuracy right now. Kokaro, because he's a striker, he has about 76%. So, you know, also Kokaro is a type of player, and I think we, 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 we saw this against Orlando in the first game. He tries to, I don't know, it's going to sound bad, but I'm going to say he tries to piss you off. <laughs> and uh, he's actually one of the, he has 11 fouls <laughs> in the, from the whole entire team. So for a striker that fouls that much, he's a very physical player. So um, our back line needs to be ready, right? Uh, Brecolo needs to be on point. This needs to be another game that Brecolo shines. Uh, Jensen, I think he's been the most consistent player in our squad outside of Dagger Dan, but uh, Brecolo needs to be on point. There, and I think having a good Brecolo, it's going to make a huge difference. And as well as our double pivot, you know, I mean, that was, we need to see consistency. And I think that's what the fans want. I think that's what everybody wants to see, consistency. They need to keep it up. It, this cannot be just a one game Nancy hey, you know, we won, you know, we take the salt out of our bodies, you know, we're going to, you know, we got blessed by holy, wa you know, in holy water, and then and then now, you know, we're, we're, we're ready to play, and then they lose again, right? So, obviously, fans are going to be super disappointed. I think uh, we have a huge chance. I think we're evenly matched with them, you know, um, but they need to be on point because these two strikers are bothersome. Are, are, are a pain, especially Kokaro. I mean, to, to foul that much as a striker, to also have all those attempts and only three goals. I know that three goals is not a lot, but, you know, how many goals do we have, right? We, you know, how many goals do we have? So uh, I don't know what are your thoughts regarding that. <laughs> no, I think I think you're right. It's we We are still not, you know, and that's something from last match we didn't see the attacking mids really get going a hundred percent. Like they did better. I think like Angulo got the assist, but for Ojeda and Faku, we need to get some goals and assists. Like they need to start contributing. Uh, and that's something I'm hoping to see an improvement on in this match. And we, it just needs to kind of grow um, each game. It's interesting to me, Luis, that they're using like Lassiter as like a forward almost. Yeah. Um, because I kind of consider him more like a winger, but he's he's got that pace. Uh, I think I think Cocker, you know, it's that uh, Cocaro. I can't say his name. Yeah, uh, it's the stash man. He's got all the power in the stash. It's the. But I agree with you that he he's kind of he's gonna get in the faces of Jansen and Brecolo and and you know. And then he's that kind of guy gonna... that likes to try and get under their skin, and that's a that's a tactic. That's I'm sure that's a tactic that some of our players use, like Felipe, mm -hmm. definitely like that. That's his now, whole, whole vibe. Another difference that I think we need to watch out for, and I wanted your opinion on, is because they have a pretty stack, um, a pretty stack uh, bench as well, just like we do. So, from, to give you an example, Lassie Lipanen, he's back. So Lipanen has always scored on us, <laughs> even when. Uh, that Honduran striker, I keep forgetting his name. Uh, he 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 was man. He always scored on Orlando. Lassie Lapine, and I think he needs to. We need to watch out for him. He he came off the bench against Cincinnati. Also, they have a, a speedster, Mason Toye. He's back also, uh, and Victor Wanyama. I mean, he doesn't need any introduction, right? Um, and. Also, you have Gabriel Corbo, which play as a left back for them when we played against them as a starter, replacing Sosa, and then Sunusi Ibrahim. So they have a pretty good, uh, I mean, their coach knows, and I think he proved against Orlando when to make those right substitutions. Oscars needs to do the same. I think the tactical um, play is going to come in hand in this game. Tremendously. So Oscar also needs to know, okay, so I'm starting with Kyle, right? I, I, I do believe that, you know, and Rafa is going to come at this minute, right? 
Um, he needs to maybe revitalize the mid, maybe bringing again, you know, knowing when to put the pieces together because they, this is a squad too that know each other. Like Panin has been in Montreal for a while, Piet as well, Chonier as well. So, you know, and they're bonding really well and gelling and gluing well with the newcomers. So, um, we, I don't know what are your thoughts regarding that. I mean, Lipanen is back. Uh, Toye is back. No, uh, I, those I, are good players. I, I think Montreal are a very strong team, honestly. I, I agree. I think there's a lot of depth there, and they've got a lot of pieces that when maybe some of them aren't working, they can bring more off the bench, which are still different elements for us to worry about. Um, but I think that's the case with most MLS sides, Luis. I, I do agree that I think they have a lot of uh, – synergy between them like they've got a good um just general squad vibe and everybody seems to be clicking like a, they had a good result against Cincy. they played well in that game go back you know watch the highlights it's they are definitely got a lot of threats to them but not ones that i don't think we can um we can't handle i think we just have to not give them opportunities you know we we can't be sloppy orlando city because it's they're gonna get two or three quickly and we're gonna be back in the hole like we were in dc um it was interesting to me that uh dagger after the last game was talking about how they concede early and that's like a real problem i need to figure out why and stop that and i think that's what montreal will go after they know that we're there's the history of us not looking defensively solid this year. We've conceded a lot of goals, and we've conceded a lot of goals early. So they're going to come at us from the beginning. So that first 20 minutes for me, we really have to kind of absorb a bit of pressure, I think, is probably what's going to be the case. Is Oscar's going to set us out a little bit defensively to start to kind of nullify them before then we grow into the game. And I think a lot of people get frustrated with that because they think, oh, we've started – badly but it's often the case on the road that the home team will come at you aggressively in that opening 20 minutes so oscar will try and nullify that by and i agree like start with kyle smith be a bit more defensive keep your more defensive guys on at the beginning and then bring on like nico bring on duncan bring on rafa like we did last game and let those guys make an impact when Montreal is a bit more tired. Um, the only difference I think like different from DC is that they will also bring guys off to the bench at that same moment. So that's where I, I agree a hundred percent, Luis, we need Oscar to get the, um, the tactics right in this one. He has to get his matchups right. And he has to get when to, when to bring on the right players to nullify the threats of Montreal but also when to bring on the right players for us to create some new threats or um, just sometimes it's the game you react to it, but there is a certain amount of planning uh, and we hope that he's got a good plan for them because they've got a lot of assets. Yeah. And, you know, we're not counting also that they, they have a Ruan and Raheem Edwards, a former LA galaxy player. So that's where I see the similarities with DC Louis, just that like bombing full back, like wing backs, so much pace on the outside, trying to get crosses into the middle. It's a little different. Cause like their DC were just going straight for Benteke on those like looping big high balls into the box. I think, the Montreal tactic is more about like speed and, and getting balls in behind um, and kind of whipped crosses in for Lasseter and, and Cocado. I don't know if it's me, but you know, I, I just be honest with you. I, you know, when you lose a game, or, or I think they won, right? I think they beat Miami. Didn't they beat Miami? Are they, they lost against Miami? I have no idea, honestly. Well, I mean, I know that Pachuca got a lot a, a huge backlash for taking a picture with Messi. But you got Ruan right there now taking a picture with Messi. Actually, yeah, they beat Miami 3 to 2 March 10th. But th th this happened in um just most recently when they went to Kansas, man. It happens to all these teams are just <laughs> and Taylor, I, who was it? I think it was Taylor yeah. Tolman tweeted yeah, about it. Yeah, I don't it understand why they do that, though. I mean, he he's... said basically on X, like, I'm an old school guy. Like, I don't care who he is. Like, I'm not going to take his jersey yeah, after the course. game or whatever. I'll tell you that. I, you don't see our players doing that. And, and I think if any of yeah. our players did do that, I think Oscar would be like, come on, man. 
there, there's a scenario here where, you know, I know that he's messy and everything, but they are rival team. You know, we're playing them in competitive scenarios, especially like if that happens when they come to town, Luis, especially after what happened when, when you know, earlier in the season. I think that's a that's a real no, no from our, our players. So I don't want to see that. Yeah. And, and you want to hear something crazy that it's going to blow your mind. Yeah. So you remember Herrera, the guy who was yep. bothersome in D.C.? Yep. He was a Montreal player last season. And he I was remember that. Yeah, yeah. He was traded. He was traded for Ruan. And Ruan was in DC last season. <laughs> I know which right. one I'd rather have. I'd rather have Herrera. I'm they sorry. Didn't rate Herrera. Remember when we were talking with right. the guy from Ball is Round, the Montreal pub, when they first came out? He didn't really rate Herrera. So they thought yeah. Juan, and we were debating whether Juan would be would be good he's been he's been okay for them yeah, like he's, he, been pretty, he, he's showing that in this role yeah. as like a wing back where he doesn't have to defend and he's right. just asked to basically <laughs> just run up the way run like just be the wing yeah. guy like he can do that we always knew he could do that but i think they're getting his crossing and his like final third a little bit better um at least he's been producing i think better than he had did for us so but i think that's partly the system that he's in so we go to the standings right here um right Yep. Uh, I mean, we're creeping up, Luis. We just we need yeah, to put together a few wins. Um, but I mean, it's a tight table. Like we're on eight points. These guys the are MLS, on ten guys. points, and they're like five places above us. You yeah, know, it's the MLS. Place, you get one win, you're on eleven points. You're potentially up in yeah. the playoff places, depending on results. Yeah. So right so, now, right now. Orlando needs to just win, just keep winning, making that ne negative five go a little low, you know, um, and just it, we're going to keep moving up. Um, that's what we need to keep doing. We need to just focus on winning. You know, that's that's the only thing. I mean, the the the, the, the ball is in our court. So, I mean, look, we got Montreal coming up, and then we got Toronto and Cincinnati at home. You know, the ideal will be to have nine points, right? Yeah, I, I think that the <laughs> the Philly inter Miami games are are tough games, yeah. and so we need to get some points where these games are. I mean, I think the East is hard. I think every game in the East is not an easy game. Per personally, I think the teams that were struggled last year have got better, and you know the teams that were good last year are almost as good, or yeah. some of them are better, some of them are worse, but. You know, look at Chicago, they're much better this year. New York Ripples, yeah, much better this look, year. Look at Toronto. Right, Toronto's Toronto, good. exactly. So even the lower teams are, like, being more competitive this year. Um, and, and Montreal, I consider, are definitely a playoff team, I think. So it's not going to be an easy game for us. Um, so uh, let's read a few more comments, Luis. Joshua Tall has said, yes, Faku and Ojeda needs to get an assist and a goal, hopefully, this game. He says, what do you think Orlando City needs to do better versus Montreal this game than we did last time we played them? Luis? We need to defend better. And uh, I feel like our double pivot needs to actually work because Piet and Chaunier completely carved them up on that game. I remember that. I don't know. I don't know if there was an issue with with Cartagena or an issue with 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 the. Remember, Wilder had to go off at half halftime yeah, basically because he got right. that yellow and he was just yeah. lost his head. Yeah. So Carta lost his head. Uh, Araujo was all over the place because he couldn't do it by himself. Um, you know, so it, we need like that's our. I mean, that's like. That's what makes the machine function, in my opinion. In it's the industry. engine, Luis. That's, is... that's that's those are the pistons right there. Yeah, boom, boom, exactly. Boom, 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 right. Yeah. You know, that's Mickey's hat. If you like Fantasia, you know what I mean. So that's that's <laughs> that's that's Mickey's hat. So if, if we don't have that, then you know we're gonna lose a lot because then some of our players are very. You know, I I feel like sometimes they don't. Either they're really good defending and they do not attack at all, or you know some of them cannot do both. You know, so you know, talking about the scheduling, I do want to say that the next few games are vital for what's coming next in our season, um, and also 
a good opportunity for the boys to, you know, make a statement. And uh, if they really want to wash their face of the horrible start of the season, this is the chance. You have two games at home. I know they're tough competition, but you got to go show all those 22,000 people that you're there to win. And then to me, the cherry on the cake is a win against Inter Miami at home. I think once, if we do that, if we do that, I think, uh, you know, we're going to have a, um, I wouldn't say an easier ladder to climb for the end of the season, but I, I just feel like people, I think everyone is going to be more at peace, <laughs> you know, when it comes to, to the team. Here's you know? the thing as well, Luis, that is a, is a big thing for me, is the table right now that we just talked about is close together. Yeah. If you win games now, you move up places more right. than you will later in the season. Later in the season, you might have someone who's ahead of you that's six foot, like points up, and you're right. chasing that for like weeks and weeks because you got to get three wins and they got to lose a couple. Whereas right now, a few wins and you you accelerate your way up the league quite easily um so it's tight and we got to take advantage of that and i agree that there's there's two home games there the toronto and the, yeah, the philly yeah. that they're not easy but they're two home games before you've got to you know face um is toronto and philly am i correct in that yeah right so it's it's toronto cincy philly. sorry toronto and cincy at home before yeah. you have to face philly and uh miami so i think those are the two winnable games since he aren't, you know, they are good, but they're not as strong as they were last year. Uh, and Toronto, you know, are better, but still not, in my opinion, a, t a top team in the no, East. No, the trick here, in my opinion, is getting all the right pieces back and playing on a 110% on a level. You know, if, 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 like, for example, the double pivot or back line, I mean, that's going to be huge. Uh, playing really good. Um, defensively is going to win us games now when i've heard some people say you know you know we we got to play nice we have people want to be entertained and you know i don't care honestly if, if this is my just my own personal opinion i don't care if it's a butt fumble goal i don't care if it's a goal with a hand and then they didn't catch it you know which would be impossible now but I don't care if it's if he scores with his face, with his nose, uh, with his eyebrow. Uh, I don't care if they touch the ball 3,000 times and then they won 1-0 in the 80th minute. The thing is, we got to win. <laughs> you know, that's that we got to get the three points. Like that that's that we're 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 at that scenario in my opinion. I um think that there's some complaints about the fact that we were getting goals last game from like subs or from defenders and not from our starting like attacking four and i agree with that from the sense of like i want the attacking four to to be like i want faku and ojeda and, and muriel more than anybody to be scoring goals but i don't think that that should then you should use that as downplaying the fact that like our defenders are scoring and that's a bad thing. I think it's great that the defenders are scoring. They're stepping up uh, when the attackings are not. And, and yeah, I agree that I want my attacking mids to score the goals, but I don't, I don't care. Like you say, Luis, I don't care where they come from. Yeah. We can win a whole season on David Breckelow's headers. Correct. Set pieces for all I care as long as you win. So mm -hmm. um, I just think there's a difference between complaining about the fact that their goals are scored by certain players and not others. And then like, you know, the fact that you want certain players to score. Yes. We want certain players. To Muriel, score, but, of course. Right. I but I, I don't, people. at the end of the day, if we win, I don't, I don't care who scores. Yeah. I mean, that's that. And, and you know what? That resound, that attitude should resound to the locker room. And I know it already does. It already does. I mean, they really don't care who scores as long as the goals are being scored. I mean, Oscar could score him if anything, you know, but he, he like, it's just, they're on that mindset of, 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 of winning, you know, now you saw playing pretty sometimes doesn't pun out the way you want to, 
uh, I want to just bring the example of Manchester City. I'm not comparing Orlando City, obviously, to Manchester City. But you see, they have the money, they have the players, they have the, the infrastructure, they have the league. And what happened? Real Madrid, probably with a... Not the Real Madrid, not, not the Galacticos that we usually see. But just by being defensively sound, Manchester City dominated possession 180 minutes the whole entire game. I think... Madrid had 18 transitions throughout through 180 minutes and they won <laughs> and then they went through they eliminated the the the, the Champions League the reigning Champions League uh winners so um it's 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 like that it, it, you know we, we got to focus on just winning the games and uh, be def and and I think and I don't know if you agree defense and being being that um bothersome and pressing the rival that to me wins games i, I don't know if, if you agree that, with that John. that's what won us home game i'm sorry away yeah. games I last agree. year like the reason we were so good as road warriors was because we would sit in and we would make it annoying for them and we would press them and then we get on the counter with our transition play that we know we're so good at well, yeah. and score goals late in games on transition and and win games that way I don't think Oscar's going to change that. I think yeah. he knows there's a difference between us at home and on the road. I think on the road, we're always a little bit more defensive. You have to be like, you can't just, and let, I mean, if you want to be Columbus and go do that, fine, but you're still not going to win every road game doing that. It's very aggressive. So I think he's not that way inclined. He wants to be a bit more defensively solid. And I, I think honestly, Luis, based on the fact that we've been leaking so many goals, is probably a good thing to be a little bit more concerned about that away from home and be a bit more defensive. But part of that is the double pivot has to protect the back four. So we got to see the Cesar and Wilder that we didn't see in this game last time we played them. We got to see that hustle and that heart and that drive. And and I definitely think pressing is, is going to be a big part of it. Um, let's read a few more comments, Louise. Joshua yeah, Tall says, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. you go. Oh, no, 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 no. You want to go? Is it this one? Is it yep. this one? Also, if we win and if things go our way, it would be a great to move up. Uh, thank you, Joshua. Stream Jesus. Vamos Orlando. Praise up for the jungle boys. There you go. Thank you so much, Jesus. Uh, David Albury. What's up, guys? Vamos Orlando. Vamos Orlando. Thank you, sir. Thank you for watching. Joshua Tall. I agree, Lewis. A stream Jesus. All I know is Galais is glued up, gelled, whatever you want to call it. The tentacles are starting to pop out. <laughs> That's a good one. I love that. Man, I love that account. A pop mango. Let's keep improving. Show us the players working. Show us the players working better passes and more defensive communication. There you go. Yes, I agree about the pressed arrival. It will help us win games. Yeah, I mean, I think what a pop mango says is spot on. I mean, we got to see a different attitude. Uh, well, we need to see what we saw against, um, you know, the, you know, the last game that we won, you know, so we need, we need to see that. We need to see that comeback, you know, that, 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 that grittiness of, of coming back of Oscar making the right substitutions, boom, scoring the game. I don't care if they scored two on me. I mean, there were great goals, you know, but I'm coming back to win the game and especially at home, you know, um, those th that's going to be huge because that's what's going to make the fans uh, happy, you know. Um, and I, again, you know, Orlando is a small market, and not a lot of people, you know, it, it's sometimes their first time that they're coming to see Orlando City, and maybe it's their first soccer, you know, professional soccer match they ever see. So, I mean, I'll tell you guys right now, soccer sometimes you may win one nil, <laughs> and the goal may be scored in the 95th minute uh or while you're like washing your hands or while you're about to leave because you don't want to get into the traffic and they score you know uh stay throughout the whole game i know it's a little nerve-wracking sometimes they could draw it could be a one-one draw and it's it's just sometimes the way the sport is you know sports are completely different you know if, if you want to see like you know scoring a lot of points you know you got like the bucks you got uh, Orlando Magic, yeah, playing the Cavs. Well, there's, you know? there's always that argument of like all the sports that have multiple points per score, right? Like, 
Yeah. You know, let's say, for example, American football, it's you just get X amount of points per I mean, score. Yeah, it was created because of of just scoring. Well, it comes from rugby, and that's yeah. where it's from rugby. We have X amount of points, the same <laughs> thing, you know. Uh, it's just a different way, but if you really look at it, it's like, you know, 21 is like three. Yeah, you know? it's like... <laughs> it's the same, so like that's why I never points. understand that argument, and a lot of people say this, and I agree. It's, just, you know, it's the same thing, and I've been to plenty of... of I, I find some of the other American sports... Just the stop startness of it all, very, very difficult for me, having coming from the world of soccer where it's just continuous. So often I'm like, well, it takes four hours. Maybe you didn't stop every 30 seconds. It would take like <laughs> one hour. So it's like not that long, really. Uh, but anyway, we're sidetracking. Uh, Luis, let's look at the cre- uh, press conference. I think um, sure. Oscar had a few interesting words and then uh, King Bercalo. Had, a, had some That's words right. to say as well. Oscar looks, uh, I like that hat. I, 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 I might say, bro. I know. I like, I, like new, I like that new hat right there. Yeah, he looks happy. He looks. I want to see if, 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 if Austin has the tough questions. Very big win this past weekend. Mood seems to be pretty good around the training facility. Um, how, how important was it to, to get that win on the road, especially now heading into yet another road trip? Right, yeah, it was very important. Uh, uh, recognizing that uh, at this point, uh, uh, we we urgently need uh, points and uh, try to escalate our position. But most importantly, that we recovered our confidence. And in the last three games, we have been uh, not just playing well, but just getting results. And then that that gives us uh, uh, energy, and surely that would help us in the future. Bueno, esperaría solutivos and and already. Right. Yeah. No. Certainly, we played against them already, and uh, yeah. a very good match here uh, with the tide. And uh, now we need to go to their place. Uh, we know that they have a good results too, and it's a team that has a new coach, uh, and and then uh, it has been gluing together. But uh, oh, yeah. we we have uh, we're very optimistic. We can go to Montreal as well just to look uh, forward for our victory. Having that away win against DC on the road, how much confidence does that instill in this group? Just mm-hmm. knowing that you know they can get a result on the road and, and kind of taking that momentum right, right into another. Right, right. The, uh, those experiences uh, help the groups. Uh, n- normally, when you get this type of results, uh, the the good things that they normally do they just get magnified, and, and and it's much better. The confidence rates in Liga Yes. Kind of talked about it this past weekend after the game about just the impact of, of the subs coming off the bench. But I wanted to ask you got the subs, the subs right here. Uh, mm-hmm. Considering his form and, and just he's leading the team in goals, how how difficult is it for you to, to try and figure out the, the starting lineup in terms uh-huh. of whether to start Luis or start Duncan or start them both and, and try and figure right. out, you know, what the best tactic is for, for both of them? Right, right. That's yeah. a good question. Not an easy decision. A uh, tough question from Austin David. Thank you, Austin. I mean, I, that I, that is a fairly tough question, actually. The tough. That's a that's a very good yeah, question. From the man who works for the club. There you go. That's right. We're the only guy that actually went to this probably event right now for 50 minutes. Decisions uh, that we have today. to make, but uh, we have to consider that uh, one of them is uh, uh, trying uh, to glue with the team, and we have to give him time to just adjust to things, knowing that we need results. Uh, the other one, uh, like Duncan, that uh, has been here already with us, that is a player that produces a lot, and, and uh, how can we mix them together? How can we use the best out of both? And all the things is what we do during the week and trying to be precise on our decisions. All right. So pretty much, pretty much um, they ask him if they're going to, if he's either going to start Duncan or, or Muriel. He says, you know, we'll, I mean, he's we'll, never going to tell them. He's never going to tell us. I don't care who you are. He's not going to tell he's you that. Gonna, <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
he he doesn't care if you've seen soccer for like 40 years, 50 years. It doesn't matter. He won't tell you. Now, um, all, all I'm saying is I I am 110% sure it's going to be Moria. Why? Because it's just a matter of sticking with a with with a starting lineup, and uh, you know I think getting getting a team that it's already a little tired because it's going to be a very physical game. I mean, it's not going to be an easy PC game. Um, getting them a young striker ready to eat the world like Duncan McGuire that really set the Set the tone. Remember when uh, Duncan uh, scored against uh, Toronto when he yep. retired uh, Michael Bradley? Oh, same, yeah, I, same, I same momentum. Same momentum. So I can still see it and when I close my eyes. Yeah, just see beautiful. Retiring Michael Bradley yeah. in my head. Um, I think a few things on that one, Luis, in particular. I, I'd say several reasons that I agree with you. One, like Oscar said, the more you play Muriel, the more you give him time to to get in with the guys and make those connecting passes. And I, we see that we do. He just, he needs to score goals. Um, but I do think there's a limit, like we talked about as well. Like yeah, there'll get to a point where it's like, okay, you, we've given you plenty of time and you're still right. not doing it at that point. Then there's a question mark. But I also really believe that Duncan his speed and just the, the kind of player he is, is more impactful when the opposition are tired and just generally, I think he does a lot off the bench because he comes on and changes games or he'll come on and give defenders a new problem to deal with, or he'll just do something different from what Muriel was doing. And that will open up the game. Like we saw last game. And then he has the potential to get a goal late or a winner. So sometimes it's tactical to be like, look, yeah, Duncan's your you know guy who's scoring right now, but is it better to wait and keep that guy and bring him on later necessarily than than play him from the start of the game? And then when if he hasn't scored and he's tired, and you're bringing on a guy who's not in form. So I agree with you, Luis, and I think that those are the reasons that I would keep playing Muriel right now. But uh, ev eventually, it will have an expiration for all of us, where we're like, okay now you just need to sit because nothing's you haven't done anything well um oh man this is great news are you ready oh uh, breaking just got, news i just got some breaking news yes oh, yes guys oh breaking news breaking news guys breaking news it's crazy <laughs> i love that that's that's that's, that's great uh hold on let me I'm so i'm starting to really get into that breaking news music i gotta say so cf montreal just got a really tough blow right now nine hours ago i want to give kudos to tom nightingale from canadian soccer daily which is an outlet you may want to check him out he said that um Kokaro, who scored three goals so far in this season, um, he was hurt by a tackle from Luca Orellano that left him clutching his right knee. And then he was seen in practice with a brace. So Kokaro will be out eight to 12 weeks. Oh. So Kokaro is going to miss the game against Orlando City. Good news for he's, us. He, he's he's been so far the biggest physical threat in attack for the for the for Montreal and a proficient penalty taker, according to my colleague Tom Nightingale. They're also so, out Apoku as well. Yeah. So, so the also we're out is Ramiro. Yeah. So Kawado Poku and Julius Anthony Bill Saint. They're already out for ankle and knee injuries, respectively. But also now you want to add one more player, too, guys. Yes. Your favorite, that means your Joseph's favorite. probably going to start. Yeah, well, Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith. <laughs> Joseph Who is Joseph Smith? <laughs> Joseph Smith is the guy from Pocahontas. Sorry. Wow. 
<laughs> Joseph Martinez, according to Canadian Soccer Daily, um, don't quote me, don't kill him, don't kill me, kill kill Canadian Soccer Daily. He's well, been seen. He's been seen limping in practice, and the prognosis is that he doesn't look good, according to the club. He so, yeah. might be. He might be also not not playing against Orlando City. So, so they're they're out of Poku, Bill Saint, Kokaro, and possibly Joseph Martinez. I mean, luckily they're flush with forwards. They've got Lapalina and they've got Mason Toy, like we talked about. You know, Ibrahim. Apparently, Sean Ray is a forward. I've never heard of that guy, but uh, they've still got other forwards. So it's not the end of the world for them. But uh, if they're out, those two, that's big for us. And I think they're they're the guys that have you know been scoring. They're threats for them. So I, uh, uh, that's I mean, news. obviously, take this. Not to say, hey, we're going to win now. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying they are hurt, but they're not out, clearly. But we got to go there and win. I mean, the stars are aligning, for sure. The stars are aligning. You know, you got Andromeda. You got all your all your zodiac signs are aligning. You know, your flat earthers, all of that is aligning right there. The ice wall, all of that. It's aligning. We just got to capitalize. We got to go in for the kill, guys. I mean, the first 15 minutes, boom, we got to see a goal from Orlando City, control the pace of the game like we do, and be road warriors again. This is the perfect opportunity to start that road warrior momentum. I don't know if I, I don't know what you think, John. I agree. I think, you know, it's a certain amount of repeat from last game. And uh, speaking of that, I tweeted that I think that uh, Breccolo can get another one. I feel like now that he's got one off the set piece, he's, you know, and we'll hear from him in a second. But uh, I think like he's he's alive, I feel like now. And and they, I I just feel like he's going to get multiple of those goals. So maybe we're going to see Breccolo again on the uh, the set piece in this game. Now that he's got one, the floodgates could open for him on those headed goals. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, I do want to say also that um, the Stad Saputo is, re is a really pretty stadium. Like, I'm looking at pictures at it. Like, it's gorgeous, man. Really nice. Uh, but, you know, I know it's going to be probably a good turnout for this game. But they are – they're hurt. You know, we got to capitalize. We're healthy. We're actually got players back from injury. Players are from international duty. We got to capitalize. It's a great momentum to give the fans a well-deserved win uh, and just go go to work and win to a home, hopefully, you know? And, I mean, if we get nine points, John, like, you know, you know, it'll be, it'll be amazing, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get excited, John. I'm starting to get excited. Me too. Let's hear from King Breccolo. Let's see what he says. Big win for you guys this past weekend, and first goal for you. Um, how are you feeling coming off this past game? Um, I would say awesome. How are you feeling? Question. Awesome, and the uh, atmosphere also here <laughs> during the week um, is much better, obviously, when you win. And uh, I think uh, it's, I don't think many teams is going gonna, is gonna to win that away game against DC. So it's, and it was also special because we turned it around and uh, the team showed real character. What was, just kind of walk me through your goal, uh, obviously coming off the set piece, it's, it's something that you kind of gave us. They gave us um, all the answers. So for me, it was just to attack the, the first post area and uh, try to flick the ball in front of the goalkeeper. And that's what happened. How impactful was that? <clears throat> Not only to no, yeah. that moment, but also just for you to get that first was awesome and also it's important for me as well since uh, I've been struggling with this injury and I, I can say now that I'm finally back and mm -hmm. I feel awesome and um, also scoring a goal on a game that I didn't feel any pain it was uh, also amazing so oh, wow. it was important for me as well. Looking ahead to, to this weekend you're playing Montreal a team you guys played at the very beginning of the season 
Uh, both teams have kind of changed a lot since then, mm. and even though it's only been a short amount of time. What are you kind of expecting for this away leg now that you've already played uh, this team early in the season? Expect, uh, I think in general, it's going to be a similar game that the, that the first one against them. It's going to be much more fighting, I think, uh, since it's away game and we just got to go out there and try to get all three points and get back on the right track. How important was it getting that away win, knowing now that you're having another back-to-back -back away trip? Um, I think it's super important. And, and right now, it doesn't matter if it's away game or home game. We just need to get those points uh, stacking up and uh, because it, it helps it helps uh, with the with the atmosphere here in the training ground and everybody wants to improve um, much more and uh, it just helps it, like with the overall uh, <laughs> overall uh, feeling right here How's the vibes the vibes Brecolo. that's right that's right the vibes Brecolo. that's right um I I feel like he's bringing the vibes, Luis. Uh, is he being sure. Americanized already? Everything's awesome for King Brecolo. I love I mean, that. You're awesome, he's... bro. That goal was awesome. The flick flick back header. So yeah. I expect to see more. And uh, great to hear that he's... he's. It seems to me like he's settled in, Luis. Like we've yeah, never... He's feeling, we yeah, he's we feeling haven't really insane. heard from him much. And this this was kind of great to see that he looks like he's part of the team now no i do want to say though i mean if he had that nagging injury you know what i mean did that came also was that part of the deal you know what i mean could have been you know um we have to understand everything goes everything's negotiation you know what i mean um and uh i think now that he's fully fit i mean we just gotta take advantage of of, of of his abilities of the scoring abilities because he scored a lot of goals in in for biking so um i love that because we got great set set piece takers we just never had you know i don't i don't think since kyle Laring, I, I believe I, we don't have somebody that will score off set pieces like that so I mean, I think it's more than just being a big guy in the box you have yeah. to know how to attack the ball you have to know how to use your head to like like like, like if you go back and watch his highlights from Viking, he does the goal that he just scored against DC. That's the kind of goal he scores multiple times for them, where he gets in the box and gets some kind of directional header on it, whether he's flicking it behind him, in front of him, or he does like a jumping power header. So there, there's something to be said with for his intelligence uh, on set pieces that someone like Jansen has never really shown that they can do that. Um, so that's why I feel like now that he's got one, uh, the floodgates might open for the King. So hoping to see more goals from him. Luis, let's get into the lineup. Um, I don't think it's going to be too different from last game, but we'll just quickly go through and talk about uh, potential matchups against Montreal and where we want to maybe see some changes or some improvements from last game. Sure, let's do the, the lineup real quick. Uh, to everybody, drop us your comment. Uh, thank you so much for for being live with us. Um, so let's go for, pull it up right here. Orlando City, boom. All right, so. The only anyway. guy we're out is um, Enrique, but I don't think he'll be starting anyway. Yeah, yeah. No. So Galesi up top, Brecolo in the goal. Uh, Brecolo, uh, Jansen. Um, I I think it'll be Kyle again. Yeah, Kyle and, and, Dagger. and Dagger. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, Kyle was like restricted last game, but I don't think he had a bad game. I think he did okay. And I think he'll uh, he'll be fine this game. Well, we should not, and that's I think going to be our mistake. If we, we cannot underestimate Montreal, right. even with those players that are injured and there are really big blows for them, I, I, at this point, at this scenario where we're at right now, and like Bre and the Brecalo said and El Profe said, we need to get as many points possible. We can't just. Just I think 
two attackers. You know what I mean? I, I think it would be a bad idea. Well, for them as well, Luis, they're going to have Huon on that right side bombing up the wing. And so Angulo is going to have to track back and cover Huon, like right. got to cover pace with pace. And then Kyle Smith's probably going to have to drop further inside and cover one of the strikers or one of the midfielders that's kind of coming into that slightly more central left-sided um, position. The two of them have got to work together. But I, if you put half a Santos there, I think you're you're asking for potential issues because of the fact that their wings are so strong. Like with DC, they're going to attack so much through the wings that I think we need Kyle in there for the defensive um, stability that he brings. Outside yeah, of I mean, that, Luis, I think the lineup is... We, we've talked about the Muriel-Duncan debate. You know, Faku still needs time to learn... You know, well, not learn. That's probably so, the wrong word, but he needs time in the ten. We can't just judge him after one game. Right, right. So uh, I know people say, you know, put the Europeans in. You know, <laughs> I heard that actually on Facebook. People say, you know, you know, Europeans are scoring a lot of goals. You should put the Europeans. Take the Spanish ones out. You know, uh, that's a little borderline right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but. Um, Definitely, I believe that who who has a larger contract right now, Muriel or Duncan Maguire, too? Muriel. Right. Who, who, who right now, as we stand, is going to stay the long term in Orlando City? I mean, that's that's the other big argument. Right. I think it's that's Muriel, the biggest right? argument is don't uh, – how to describe this? If If you had two cars and they were exactly the same car, right – and then you knew one of them was going to be gone and you wanted to get used to driving one of the, you drive the one that you're going to keep long-term, you would not drive the one that's going to be gone. That's, that's right. probably a terrible analogy, but uh, it's essentially that, right? He's going to be here long-term. It doesn't, even if Duncan's scoring a bunch, uh, maybe that gets to a point, like I said, where it doesn't matter and you have to play Duncan because you just need output from your striker and, and Luis. Well, we're going to play it. Duncan, John. We're going to play but Duncan. He, he's still scoring off the bench and he's still scoring. So that's right. What's the difference, right? Uh, that's also the argument would be said. But uh, I, I think understand tactically... that people see goals and they go play the guy who scored goals. But sometimes yeah. there's a little bit more to it than that. And also, I think you got to, like, look. Oscar doesn't want to give up on Muriel. And I think if you were to if you were to do it now, it would I think be a little bit detrimental to his mental. Like I think he's not quite ready to give up on being that starting guy. So I think if Oscar had to pull the rug out now, it would be like, okay, I'm already giving up on you. And that says a lot for me personally. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, why don't I mean, look? Um, if right now Duncan is making more of an impact as a sub and he's scoring goals, then let's go for that. Right now, I feel like Muriel needs time to adjust, and you know, um, we did the same thing against Kara, uh, urgent Kara. He scored like what eight goals, eight, nine goals. So, um, Right I think now, with Carr, it was the fact that he didn't run that much I had an issue with, not the fact that he he's getting scored goals. It was just right. him, you know. We so didn't I understand. super like, but I also think some people scapegoated him a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, look, look when it comes to to Jacqueline, you know, fantastic player, but you know, you're not gonna start him against, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's just it's just not. It's just not reality, guys. I mean, it's just it's just not it doesn't happen that way unless he's having like the season that Duncan had, you know. Uh, then yeah, you know, at, at that point, yeah. But uh, at, at this moment, um, I think we'll, I mean, I'm sticking with Muriel right now. Jacqueline played in that OCB game against Miami and looked extremely average. So there's your counter argument for Jacqueline. Love the guy, but you know, he's not he's not a um, as good as some people might think. Okay, so Rodolfo Chang, Orlando needs to shoot on target more often, test the Montreal keeper, wait for rebounds. Muriel Torres Ojeda should look for bombarding the keeper. 
pass two to three times to open men and shoot. No need for a hundred useless passes. There you go. I agree. I agree with him. I, I think Facundo needs to do what he did last game, play free in the middle. And I think that really helped. I think we were more um, direct last game. Definitely. I think that was part of what Muriel was doing was like connecting us and they were running off him, running forward, um, bombing up the field. And Muriel was laying passes up to Faku and Angulo and Ojeda. And we weren't, we weren't playing sideways. We were playing vertically. We were playing straight up the field. Um, especially with the strength, like we said, Luis, on the, um, on the counterattack, on the transition, that's when you definitely have to be direct. There's no, there's no point in getting the transition. Um, and then you get up the field and you pass around like five times. It's just not worth it. So, yeah, I agree. So what, what will be your predictions for this game, John? Um, I think I'm going to say two, one to us. I think we get it. We get the late winner. Great, great. Uh, to me, it's going to be uh, two to two nil Orlando, hopefully, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, and 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 score for sure. So hopefully, we see a Muriel um, brace. <laughs> if not, I'm just content with with whatever may may happen. Um, whoever scores, as long as Orlando is winning, that's all I care about. Now. Um, uh, the, the lineup is going to be Galese up top, Dagger Dam, Bracalo, Jensen Smith, Araujo, Cartagena, Torres, uh, Ojeda, Angulo, and then Luis Buriel right up top. Right, John? Yep. I think that's will be it. All right, John. So um, I think we're, I want to thank everyone that uh, joined today um, to the stream. Uh, if you just got here, um, you can rewind it and check it back. Drop us your comments. Um, anything you want to add today, John? No, just uh, thank you everybody for, for being here. You know, like, follow, subscribe. Our socials are on the screen or at the end of every episode. Um, and uh, hope to see some of you tomorrow night come out for the uh, Pride game against the San Diego Wave, 8 o'clock. Uh, no home game this weekend for City. So if you need your soccer fix in Orlando, uh, come check out a Pride game. All right, guys, uh, without further ado, thank you so much. And uh, let's wish the boys uh, good luck. And vamos, Orlando. Vamos, Orlando.